All right, everybody, today we're going to install the Dragon Fire, make sure I'm saying it right, Dragon Fire harness bar on the KRX. What it is, we have the factory seat belts in it now, and um, we just want, we feel safer with a four point harness. So, actually, my niece and her boyfriend Chase bought us this for Christmas, and uh, then we ordered this, the Dragonfly from RAD Parts, Rad Parts, um, and I'll, I'll put a link to that below. I can't put a link to Chase and uh, Serena on this, so sorry about that, but thanks guys, I really appreciate this. We wanted this because it's gonna keep us safer in case we do roll. Um, I've laid everything out here on the table, that way we'll know what we're doing. The only, I'm gonna point this out. The Dragonfire instructions look phenomenal color they just look phenomenal that right there is going to help me out a lot and i've read over them and it's very precise the only problem i see not with instructions but it calls for a one inch hole saw i have a one and an eighth inch and a seventh eight seven eighth inch so i'm gonna try with the smaller first and see if i can work around it because i don't have the proper size but other than that i think i got everything i need so First thing we gotta do is remove the old seat belts and the seats. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Hey, by the way, if this helps, please help me out and subscribe. Thanks guys, let's go get All right guys, uh, one thing I didn't add about RAD parts is uh, d d give them a shot. I think you'll be impressed because when you, a lot of time you pay for express shipping, you pay for express shipping and it takes them two weeks to get it in, the order in it don't matter if you paid express shipping because it takes them forever to get it to the shipper but not with rad parts you order and it's in the mail like that afternoon i don't know how they do it but i really appreciate that all right so first thing we got to do is take the seat out and we're going to take the bottoms out look at all that mud you just clip this and pull the seats out all right then that exposes the bolts and I believe the bolts we got to take out is this. And then we got to slide it forward and there's a couple more bolts back there. So we're going to hit that out. Hit that out. We're going to take that out. Hope we don't hit it out. All right, let's get to doing that. All right, everybody, this is a top side view of this. And this is a 12 millimeter. And it seems easy enough to break loose. Here's the other side. All right, this is the front seat bolts. Front seat bracket bolts, I guess you should call it. Go ahead and take them out. I'm gonna skip this and go to the back. Okay, got the front two bolts out. And then I'm gonna slide forward and there's my other bolts in the back. I don't know if you can see them. Can you see them right here? I gotta touch them, find them on the screen right there. One on this side and one on that side. And these are 12 millimeters. I had to get down here where I get ugly with them. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with that. I'm gonna take them out and then lift the seat out. All right, everybody, so I got the four bolts out on the bottom. Now I'm just lifting the seat out. So that part was easy. All right, there one a piece on the ground. That part was easy. I'm gonna lay these out of the way. Let's see what I dropped. All right, this slides right in the roller. All right, let's see what it looks like with the seat out. And I laid my bolts in the floorboard just so I can keep up with them. All right, now we've got a whole big working area. So we'll start taking the seat belts out. Okay. For my seat belts, this takes a 17. And um, don't try to take it off from this side because this is a welded nut. It stays in place. So you got to take it out from the inside. This is kind of hard to get. You won't get a ratchet on it. You have to use a wrench. And it's pretty tight. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I do to get that off. And there's the other one, and that's a 17 also. All right, let's do this. Okay, like I said, this is tight, so I got the 17 on it. I take another boxed in wrench and put in this little gap here, hold it, and pull it. 
to give you a little leverage to break it loose. That's my trick there. All right, then it broke loose easy. That one actually come off easy. That other seat belt. All right, let's take those off. I'm not gonna bore you with that again. Let's just take that off. All right, I left out one very important reason that I went with the Dragonfly harnesses. So what it is, is when we ordered our, our side by side, we wanted the stereo system. So we got the factory speakers and they mount right here. Well, there's a roll bar addition, I guess you want to call it, that goes here that you can mount your seat belts on. Well, the issue is with the speaker pod, you can't have that bar. So to put a, if you have the speakers, and you're going to put in a four point or five point harness or six point whatever then this is the way you pretty much have to do it use the dragonfly so i forgot that and really felt like i needed to add that on there all right all right i'm taking this bolt out for the seat belt and it just ain't quite enough room i'm, I'm fighting this plastic piece so this looks like three push pins and then i can slide that out of the way so i'm going to do that to get that out of the way to make it easier to work with Two, three. Oh yeah, that's much better. I might even be able to get a ratchet on it once I took that off. All right, seat belt's gone. Take the other one out. Okay, I'm gonna pull this one out. And the reason I'm filming pulling this one out. is because this is where the seat belt override switch is and i actually ordered the part from rad parts on that too and people actually put a jumper plug in it and you can do that as well It's cold out here this morning. I guess that's why this stuff ain't working right. All right. So right here's the connector. I might have to get a little screwdriver to push that. Let me try this push pin thing. I got right here because that's the man thing to do, not get the proper stuff. It worked. And we'll go ahead and plug that up now while we get while we're here okay here's a little thing again rad parts and guys if i'm butchering it if it's not rad if it's just rad i'm sorry but let me see it is actually ww rad parts and it is rad mail at yahoo.com so here's the link that's it done okay that way i won't forget that later okay so right here if it shows is a seat belt where the seat belt slides in and out and there's a 17 or it takes a 17 socket or wrench to fit that, so I'm going to try to take that out. That went pretty easy. Look at the mud.
Now this is the top part of the seat belt and that's a 14 millimeter socket fits that. So we'll take that out and then the seat belt is done. We can get rid of that. Okay, my instruction says to remove the top inner cage bolt. So here's a cage and it has a perfect diagram of it and there's the outside one and here is the inside one and there's the inside of the machine that way so i need to take this one out also i love this mesh back by the way it keeps the dust out believe it or not okay I'm removing these and it takes a 17 socket on that as well and these are tight as well so you can use the wrench as a cheater pipe if you've got a pipe it's even better but i don't even know what one is and you can it gives you more leverage I want to show you my wrench trick again and I noticed when I took the bolts out of this top for the seat belts it was red Loctite and if you know red Loctite it's not made to be removed so that might be why they're so tough all right just want to share that next it tells me to remove the three what I'm moving is this removing is this intake cover right here and uh, it's right behind the speaker if you don't have a speaker it just sits in front of the bed, cargo bed and there's a push pin here and a push pin here and another one up in the front so i'll get those real quick really didn't want that to go all the way out but it did i'll leave them right there Actually, my front one was already out. Muddy, nasty. So our next step is we're supposed to drill two holes. And the holes is where these bolts go into the frame of the machine. Okay, it says to locate the two squares on the back of the machine, on the back of the cab, whatever you'll call it. And I laid these up here just to make sure that I, that's where they was talking about. So that's them. All right, and it says measure four, five eighths of an inch down and five eighths of an inch over. So basically what we're doing in my mind is we're finding the center. All right, I'm gonna pull from a one inch mark just because it's easy for me. And that's five eighths that way. And right here is five eighths that way. So basically, I want my drill bit to be right there in that cross. All right, so in theory, when you use this hole saw, this is gonna hit the hole, the threaded hole in the back and not damage it. And this is just gonna cut the plastic out around it. And like I said, this is a 7 8 inch and it calls for a 1 8 We're going to see how that works. It is a 7 8 and it calls for a 1 8 It calls for a 1 inch. I say 1 8 All right, my wife's over nodding telling me I was wrong and I was wrong. So we're going to drill that and hope we hit the hole right. So let's do it and see. Fingers crossed. All right, I'm putting my pilot bit on this right there on it. And I'm going to see and hope for the best. Looks like I'm off just a little bit. So I'm gonna pull this out. I was off just a little bit. My measurement, yeah, it shows I was off. All right, so we're gonna work that. All right, so if you see right here, there's a hole that's back in here and I'm supposed to I supposed to have been centered to that hole. Okay, the 7 8 inch hole saw is plenty big enough if I would have had it, if I would have measured correctly. And it's off just a little bit. So what I'm going to do, it has to go in here. So it needs to be about right there. So that's how much of the hole I need to cut out to make this work. 
let me do it this way there's one bolt is so that's how much I need to cut out so I'm gonna mark that that's what I need to get rid of and what I'm gonna do is take my razor knife I would say don't try this at home but you have to try it at home and try cutting that out and if it was a little warmer out here it'd probably go a lot better but that's actually going to work I don't like cutting toward my hand good thing I'm married to a nurse that right baby mm -hmm. I'm going to try to measure better on my snack saw. You hear the dog? She's got a shiny collar on and chasing it. Boy, that made that ugly. Good thing that's going to be hid. Anyway, so that's the fix if you uh, screw up like I did. That'll work. All right, guys. Let's try not to screw up again. So it went much better on my second hole. And I do see where a one inch hole saw would make it a lot better. It gives you a little bit more room for uh, mistakes. So, all right, now let's do next step. Because well, I laid my bolts out, kind of uh, uh, just separated them. Bolts, nuts, spacers, and all that good stuff. So for this next step, I'm gonna need two of these, two of these two lock washers, and two of the spacers. So that's what I'll need for the next step. That's P1, P2, P3, and P4 is the part number on here. All right, so here's the, the bracket that we're gonna put in. So it just sits in here like this. All right, now, it was saying be sure to use in this order, which most of us know that, but just in case you don't, you use the nut, the lock washer, and the flat washer. That's the order it goes. All right. Now, here's the only part that I think is going to be a little tricky is getting this spacer to stay in here. So they go in there, in there. Then I'm going to use my bolt to try to pick them up. And it said just start them. Just get them started in there is all you want for now. Actually, that wasn't as bad as what I thought it was. Okay, then for the top one, use the big one and a flat washer, the big nut to come with it. And I'm not going to tighten them until they tell me when to tighten them. So there we go. Let's uh, go on to the next step. Okay, so when I put my bolt in here, I put it in there, bolt, washer, like so. And then put it through my bracket. Alright, then I went back and read the instructions. No, I done it wrong. This washer goes in between the bracket and the machine. And then this bolt goes through it, so I wanted to add that little mess up I done. Alright, so since the bracket's loose, this is the top side. There's the bracket, and the bolt goes through here. So I'm just going to slide my washer underneath. Wiggle it to get it started. And there it is. Now, of course, when I put my ratchet on here, if it's hard to turn, then I'm going to back it out and make sure I don't have it cross-threaded. So I believe we're ready to tighten down, but I'm going to wait and do it when the instructions say. Okay, so I'm installing these bolts or tightening these bolts. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is the bolt that come out of here in this back cage mount was a 17 socket that fit it. It's a 15 that's going back in it. Okay, on the other bolts on the inside where the spacers go, it was a 14, I think, that I came out right there. I'll take that back. It's 12 on all the other bolts, and this is a 13 that fits that one. So, 
I'm gonna tighten these up. I just wanted to add that, and it does say torque them. I don't have a torque wrench, so I'm gonna do it the shade tree way and just tighten. Next is the eye bolts where you actually attach the harness, and it goes eye bolt, the bracket, flat washer, and then this is a lock washer. And what I'm gonna do to help hold that eye bolt, we want them to be in the straight ahead position when we're doing it. So I got a screwdriver that I can hold while I put my ratchet and tighten those up. So I'll just hold the screwdriver and let it rest against it and tighten it and move it where I want it. All right, here's what I was talking about. I hold the ratchet, I hold the screwdriver and the eye bolt to hold it, and then I tighten it. And this is a lock nut, so it does take a little doing. And I'll show you what I mean by having it straight ahead. Actually, I've got the wrong socket. I thought I had a 17, but I, a 16, but I got a 17. All right. We'll do the same thing on the other one, but with the right size. This takes a 16. Okay. First of all, I want to apologize if I've been saying dragonfly. It's dragon fire. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> And I've been saying this, I think, the whole video, but I am not going to redo this video, so that was on me. Anyway, so when the Dragon Fire harnesses the kit, it comes with this right here. And this clips onto the eye bolt. Okay. On the Ace harnesses, it's got this regular where it just bolts in solid. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this out, this piece, get rid of it, and put this piece on. This is the way they come. So basically, I just got to take this one out. Put the other one in and let's hope that I get this right. I don't know if it needs to go this way or the other way. At least it's pretty simple. Now, if it needs to flip, then I'll just take it out and flip it. But that's the way i done that. I hope it showed. And this just clips in place. And it also, I almost used this instead. But then it would be solid. And this will actually give it more of a pivot point. So that's the reason I went ahead and went with what it's supposed to use. The harness right. goes on the inside. You got to have a spacer and the bolt that they provide. So you go bolt, harness, and spacer. All right, and I'm finger tightening that one. And so far, the only bolts that we've reused is going to be this one. I make sure my harness is laying flat, and this goes in the factory. Hmm. So I about put it in the wrong one. So we're reusing this, we're going to use bolt, and down on the bottom, I'll make sure to get my wires out of the way. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm tightening that up right there. All right, I'm going to snug these, and I'm going to make sure they're pointing in the right direction, probably the way we sit. I'm going to put them about at an angle like that. I'm going to do the same thing with on the so other I'm side. I'm going to put my little piece back in. With my push pins. Okay, so there's two things I'm doing different that I'm not really following the instructions on. What you're supposed to do, if you can see, right here is my the cow covers back on, and uh, our intake box cover, whatever you want to call it. And you're supposed to mark it right here with a sharpie. You're supposed to mark it and cut that out. Okay, so what I have is a, I have the speaker back here, the 12-inch sub uh, from the factory. If you can see it, the shadow is pretty bad, so I don't know if you can. But anyway, and it vibrates. So I'm hoping that that being pushed up a little bit will keep it from vibrating. And if it don't, and it don't work out for me, then later on I will cut that. Okay, the second thing I'm going to do is right here on my screen i'll show you on the inside that was actually supposed to go behind the bracket 
and uh, I was going to take the bracket back out and put that back in behind it and I thought you know what I'm just gonna put a push pin here and there's one more over there one of them push pins I'm gonna drill a small hole five five sixteenths drill bit right there and put a push pin in it so my screen was actually supposed to attach it had a bolt hole like this I haven't put the passenger side in yet and it goes here so we're actually going I'm gonna put them on back there and fasten them down with the push pins like I was talking about see the bracket covered it up if I'd have paid attention I could have put them in there but I didn't so I'm gonna cheat just put it up there here's the driver side done and you just got to adjust it to fit you I really like them and we'll get here and put them on and show you what it looks like on and how I think it feels I got these crooked, so I need to lower this side where they're even when you put pressure on. I thought I had them straight, so I'm gonna straighten that, then I'm gonna get it. The harness is fairly simple to put on. You just click it like a seatbelt. Then if you wanna adjust it, you just tighten them down. Okay, no, it's not as safe as a six point or a five point, but it's a lot safer than the factory seat belts. There's no comparison. So if we ever roll, at least we'll be, we'll stay in here. That's what it looks like. My camera lady went inside, so. And you do some tweaking and adjusting as you ride and what's comfortable and what works. I like it and uh, the install I actually was a little intimidated by looking at the instructions but my hats off to dragon fire because their the instructions was phenomenal and uh, I love it it was in color and it was a picture of an actual machine not a hand-drawn diagram or a computer uh, generated diagram so it was awesome I love this I'm ready to ride now all right see ya